The ability to handle pressure is one of the most crucial qualities an athlete can possess. There are internal pressures, external pressures, and how the player responds in those situations usually defines his career. You can be fast, powerful, accurate, tough, but if you can't deal with pressure, good luck. In Trey Lance's second season, his true mettle will be tested in many different ways. He's taking the reins from Jimmy Garoppolo, who in the last three years has been to two NFC championships, one Super Bowl. The 49ers are in win-now mode with high-priced elite-level superstars. This window doesn't stay open forever. A coach and general manager whose seats will catch fire if Lance doesn't perform. All the pressure that comes with being the number three overall pick. And he's not just the number three overall pick, but the Niners sacrificed way more by trading two future first and two future thirds to move up, a similar package to what teams have sent for future Hall of Famers like Jalen Ramsey. The 49ers made the move in part to acquire a rookie quarterback with a lower contract so they could pay their young superstars, but also, more importantly, to find the guy who can do the things Jimmy Garoppolo can't, so it'll all ultimately come down to how Lance handles pressure off the field and certainly on it. How has he handled it pre-snap, post-snap, where has he excelled, and where has he struggled? We'll break it all down right after I thank this week's sponsor, my good friends at Manscaped. Manscaped is the global leader in men's grooming tools and hygiene solutions, and they've been gearing up for Father's Day, which is right around the corner. If you feel like you keep getting dad the same stuff every single year, Manscaped is the one-stop shop that has anything he could need. Of course, they always have what, in my opinion, is their best product, the Lawnmower 4.0, which is perfect for beards, chests, and the rest. And if you want to really hit a home run, Manscaped has just launched their brand new Boxers 2.0 that are insanely comfortable. They have six different color combinations, they have super soft fabric, they're moisture wicking, anti-chafing, cooling, and tagless, making them quite possibly the most comfortable boxers he will ever wear. To make Dad happy, all you gotta do is go to manscaped.com and get 20% off plus free shipping when you use my promo code Rollins at checkout. That's 20% off plus free shipping with my code Rollins at manscaped.com. All right, so in Lance's small three-game sample size, he did show us a lot. When he was kept clean without pressure, he had the NFL's highest yards per attempt, the second highest average depth the target, and the 11th best QB rating. And statistically, compared to Jimmy G, he was slightly better in those categories. But with pressure is when both quarterbacks wilted and where Lance really needs to set himself apart as a clear upgrade. Under pressure, he passed for just 4.8 yards per attempt, 45th in the league. The QB rating was within that same range. But just a three-game statistical sample size in a rookie season does not tell the full story, so let's dive even deeper. He has a tendency to break the pocket, especially clean pockets, a little too early, as evidenced by his highest percentage of plays over 2.5 seconds. And you can't create consistency when you're constantly on the move, because that affects your reads, your accuracy, the timing of the play, receivers who are coming open later in the down won't get the ball, a lot of things can go wrong when you're moving out of the pocket, and it can also create pressure. On the first third down of the game, the 49ers have a tight bunch to the left with three receivers clumped together, and the Texans have two corners lined up right next to each other. Lance sees this safety dropping deep into what looks like a too high safety coverage, and what he can glean from these corners is it's probably zone, since in man they'd be staggered so the Niners couldn't run a pick play to free somebody up. The Niners are running what Shanahan calls Bingo CO China with this quick post from Brandon Ayuk, and watch how both corners bump the receivers off the line then zone off into coverage. Lance is reading the Mike linebacker Christian Kirksey to determine if he wants Kittle or Ayuk, but instead of sitting, stepping up into this clean pocket while he waits, he gets antsy and takes off while Ayuk comes free. You can't anticipate these deeper receivers coming open if you've dropped your eyes and you're running in the opposite direction, plus you'll never build pocket presence if you're never in it. These next two plays are identical concepts where Lance gets pressured because he doesn't throw on time, so he creates his own pressure and minimizes yards after the catch. Instead of layering this ball over the second level of coverage to Debo Samuel, he starts looking to run, and even though he completes the pass, everything is more difficult. 
Playing within structure allows you to anticipate open receivers, which is a huge part of creating yards after the catch, and the 49ers' entire offense is all about creating yards after the catch. Here, let me prove to you what playing within structure can do, because Lance did show he could, even though it certainly didn't happen all the time. This is the same exact concept from the Texans play from like 20 seconds ago, where they have two deep safeties and their same corners are matched over the 49ers' same bunch formation. They are running Bingo CO China again and watch Lance. He sees the coverage is identical and again is reading Kirksey. When Kirksey flips his hips to mirror Kittle, he could still fall off for Ayuk's post route, so Lance throws it to his upfield shoulder to protect Ayuk, which creates some of that coveted yards after the catch. Sometimes Lance's non-pressured numbers were better because he saw the blitz coming and got rid of the ball before they could get near him. He showed flashes of elite pre-snap processing, like here where he waits till there's just six seconds left on the clock to fake the snap. With the play clock winding down, the Texans start to anticipate he'll hike the ball and jump into their slot blitz, where instead of this too high safety shell they're presenting, they're rolling into one high with this guy covering for the blitzer. Lance uses a can call, which is what Shanahan calls audibling to the second play. Usually the 49ers give Jimmy or Lance two plays in the huddle, and then with the play clock basically at zero, Lance uses a rhino call, rhino, rhino's on. where instead of having to yell blue 42 hike or whatever, rhino means F that, snap the ball now. This is why Peyton always yelled Omaha, that was their version of Rhino, cause Peyton would always let the clock get super low since he was flapping his arms around or whatever. So Lance does all that in a super short period of time and gets Debo Samuel on a safety instead of a corner, that's a win every time. But Debo drops what's a pretty catchable pass, still not the most accurate. It's important that Lance demonstrates these pre-snap abilities since Shanahan's offense is supposed to be one of the headiest to master, and the more you can anticipate pressure coming pre-snap, the better he'll play with guys bearing down on him. If he can develop there, it'll be a drastic improvement over Jimmy G, who was consistently below average against pressure, and that's certainly not the only area Lance will differentiate himself. Shanahan has packages and concepts that lend themselves to his more college-like playstyle, where the Niners featured some RPOs or even PROs last season. They ran this pass-run option a lot, where Lance reads the linebacker to determine where the Niners have numbers. With Trent Sherfield motioning to the bottom, there are four threats for the screen, which means they have three blockers and the Cardinals only have two underneath defenders to counter, so Lance reads Isaiah Simmons to see what he does. If he sits, Lance throws the screen, but when he follows, the Niners now have 5-on-5 five five in the box, a hat on a hat for Lance to take off and run. Good coaches figure out how to create packages instead of just running concepts, so defenses can't key on one thing and overload wherever the ball is going. Now the Cardinals bring their second safety down to make sure they have enough guys for the screen, which shifts their one high safety more to the middle, creating an ISO matchup for Ayuk. Lance hasn't shown he's always the most accurate, but proving he can be pinpoint shows he has the potential to do it over and over. This package we just looked at is exciting because it shows how Shanahan's gears are turning and how he wants to evolve this offense, but it also begins to get into some of my Trey Lance concerns. For one, I don't think he's nearly as dynamic running the ball as we thought he'd be coming out of college where he ran for 1,100 yards and 14 touchdowns in his sophomore season. Obviously, he's not going to be that productive in the NFL, but there's a lack of speed and quick twitch ability that doesn't show me he's going to be an explosive runner at all. And for two, he got the absolute crap kicked out of him because of this. He injured his knee running, he wasn't really protecting himself in general, and I kept writing, they're kicking the crap out of him in my notes. Throwing-wise, his footwork is something that worries me, but can definitely be cleaned up and improved on heading into year two. But his mechanics are funky at best, which you really can't fix and create some awkward throws. Quarterbacks or pitchers in baseball want their heads to move as little as possible since their eyes are fixed on their target. Moving the eyes basically creates a moving target, but watch how Lance gets set to throw and his head shifts almost violently down and then back upwards, creating a lot of extra, unnecessary movement in the rest of his body, which is one of the reasons why he throws a lot of wobbly passes. 
he struggles with consistency, especially on these little play action flat routes, which I actually talked about in my Lance Scouting Report video that I'll link below. And for Shanahan, who creates wide open receivers and expects these little short passes to be completed at a high clip, it's kind of an odd fit watching the future of the Niners struggle with these. With all of that said, Lance is coming in to replace a quarterback in Jimmy Garoppolo who was far from perfect, as Niners fans know better than anybody. And Jimmy G went to a Super Bowl and an NFC Championship last season, and there are a lot of areas where Lance already has a leg up on the Italian Stallion. He has a stronger arm, faster legs, and has shown signs of playing well under pressure. Garoppolo has always handled pressure well off the field, but not always well on it. With Lance sitting most of his rookie year, the pressure and expectations keep rising as the 49ers are expecting a Super Bowl in 2022. The pressure is on and the lights are brighter than ever. Trey Lance in his second season, things are heating up.